Hi, welcome to Punchline Talks, the business breakfast briefers. I'm Mark Owen, and each week I invite a panel of business and civic leaders to review the morning papers, tell us what's happening in their own individual business and their own individual business sectors. And finally, what's caught their eye in this week's Punchline? First of all, I'd like to thank our fantastic sponsors, Hazelwood's Accountants and Business Advisors, who provide me with fresh coffee every week as well. <laughs> If you like the show, please like, share and subscribe. So let's introduce my fantastic panel today. We've got Neil Ricketts, ex-CEO of Vissarian. He's the chairman of the Forrester Dean Economic Partnership. And I've invited him on the show today to talk about the Inspiring the Forest event, which is coming up very shortly. We've got Enzo Mora, CEO of Mortgage Brain. The company has 110 staff and a turnover around 6 million. And finally, and not least, first time to the show, we've got Marina Hodgkins. She is the owner of Fringe Benefits and La Bella Beauty Salon on Southgate Street in Gloucester. Thank you all and welcome to Punchline Talks. Right, okay, we're going to have a quick look at the headlines. I'm just going to share my screen, courtesy of the BBC. It's all about Boris this morning, unfortunately. So let's say end of the road for Johnson, says the Times. The I, he lied, lied and lied. The Financial Times, Johnson repeated lies to MPs condemned in searing report. The Daily Telegraph, Johnson allies vow to oust MPs who vote for his censure. And the Daily Mail. It's funny how the Daily Mail has switched. I don't know if you noticed it, but one moment they were going out, 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 Boris, and now they love him again. The Daily Mail, Tory revolt over vindictive bids to banish Boris. The Metro is a proper whopper, a carer stopper, a career stopper. And the, the Daily Star, it's official. Pinocchio is an, abs uh, is an ab ab absolute lying wazak. And the Daily Express, the most spiteful stitch up in history of politics. The Mirror, he'll tell you it's a witch hunt, he'll tell you it's democracy betrayed, he'll tell you it's done nothing wrong, but just one word tells his story, liar. The Guardian, the verdict on Johnson, and the Sun picks out a totally different story, he's had enough of it, and to be honest with you, I don't want to mention that guy. He's a sick bastard. Right, it's moving swiftly on. I can't beat that out. Anyway, right, let's get on with the show. <laughs> We're going to start with you, Neil. Thanks ever so much for joining us today. What have we picked up? Uh, uh, thanks, Mark. I mean, uh, you do it to me every time. So uh, top of my list was Boris. Uh, you know, I mean, who would want to be his uh, PR agent right now? Uh, one of the headlines, is it the end for Boris? Well, the answer is no. I mean, he's going to make a fortune on the speaker trail. You know, he's already made or reported to have made millions of pounds um and um you know what good what good does it do you know i'm i i, I mean you must have met him. Who, did, you, did you meet him now I, I did meet him yeah i did meet him and um uh yeah perfectly pleasant chap but uh you know would i buy a second hand car off him probably not but uh you know i had uh, i had lunch in his uh, in his office unfortunately he wasn't there at the time he was the london mayor um but you know he's he's had a colorful colourful career hasn't he I mean uh, I, I would say that you know it was all there for everybody to see before but we, we still you know believed is is hype about the 340 million pound a week going to the NHS and all this and you know there's him there's Donald Trump I mean the question I have is who do you trust um, I mean I think I think this has done politics no good at all uh, in and we're starting to see the, the ramifications for that now. We've got a completely new leadership down here in the Forest of Dean. Uh, the Green Party have, uh, have taken over from, uh, you know, the independents and a, a kind of coalition almost. And, um, you know, good luck to them. You know, they've got a, a hell of a job uh, moving forward. Would like to thank uh, Tim Gwillen because I know he's been on the show before. Uh, had a lot of time for what he did locally. But... Um, uh, it's all change, and uh, as you mentioned, all change for me. You know, I've left the Syrian now, and uh, uh, and on to new challenges, and uh, we'll talk about those a bit a bit later on. Okay, thanks so much. Any other stories you want to quick? I just want to. I'm fascinated that you went into Boris mm -hmm. Johnson had lunch in his office without him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was it was much better to be honest without him there. But um, they did, did a great job of putting out all of the uh, things that they'd been been given by other politicians when they'd visited, but. Um, uh, the other stories that I had, uh, I think we're in a massive, a, a bit like Boris and a bit like politics. I think we're in for a, a massive amount of change. You asked me this morning about uh, 
had I gone to the to get some papers, I think papers are dead. Uh, Ian Mean might have a different view about that, but I, uh, a bit like Marina, I can't remember the last time I actually bought a, a paper except for this show. Uh, the, the really worrying thing for me was uh, a story on Sky, which was about um, the number of pupils which are, are missing uh, that have just dropped off the radar. And, you know, what are those guys going to be doing in the future? Uh, because without a good education, without a basic foundation, it's very hard for them to be employable. And does that mean that we're going to have a, a whole generation uh, that are not only affected by COVID, but also um, by, by not having this education? I think one of the really interesting things, and, and we can talk about this, is about the, the impact of AI. And, um, you know, I did turn to AI this morning and, and you're, you're pretty lucky that uh, it, it didn't come up with the, the, the best stories in uh in Gloucestershire for business today. Otherwise, you know, punchline days are finished. But um, it, it won't be long until, you know, we're all replaced by avatars or or people, you know, what, what is our position in society moving forward? You know, uh, a lot of industries are going to be massively impacted by AI. And, uh, and, and, you know, I think you either embrace it or you become a victim to it. Uh, Marina's in a great position because we need our hairs cut. You know, but what what industries will be replaced by uh, by AI? Anyway, those are the Thanks. stories I've got. Well, I think we'll have to stop you there. Thanks ever so much. Otherwise, uh, you know, over, there there are other people on the show, right? Anyway, let's go. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks ever so much, Neil. Enzo, great to see you again, mate. Thanks for joining us today. What have you picked out from the papers? Morning, Mark. Um, uh, paper wise, uh, I subscribe with the Times, so I've got. Uh, few articles uh, from there uh hollywood star al pacino becomes father again at 83 i, wow. I just find that amazing fascinating that 83 um he's still going strong it's his fourth child i don't think um, be, i don't think he'll be doing a lot of child care though really not for long <laughs> well he's got a younger wife she's only 29 years old maybe that helps I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> um, another story. Uh, there was an under-23 uh, cycling championships in uh, France, I think, uh, in Paris. And um, 30 riders were disqualified because they were hanging on to uh, the car that was taking them up the hill during the race. <laughs> I I've got Italian uh, background. And unfortunately, 24 of the riders were... Italian. No English. <laughs> well, we don't like to cheat, do we? Let's be honest about it. And then uh, a, a weather story. Um, it caught my eye because there was a picture of a Doberman and it's about uh, dog bites more common during warmer weather. And uh, it likened uh, dogs to uh, men. Apparently we get quite angry when the, uh, the weather's uh, hot. So, uh, be careful of uh, more dog bites during the next uh, few weeks. Okay. <laughs> a, a real selection of different stories there. Thanks for that, Enzo. Right, let's go over to you, Marina. What have you picked out from us today? And welcome to the show for the first time, by the oh, way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Lovely to meet you, Mark, and everyone. Um, and hello again to Enzo. Um, I picked up about uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's uh, daughter, Apple. Obviously, fashion is my thing. <laughs> and uh, I love the fact that she has uh, recycled her dress. Um, it's, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow used that dress at the Oscars uh, and her daughter is in the same dress on the left, you know, and it fits her. Doesn't she look very amazing? <laughs> yeah. You know, would you, would you wear a suit that was your dad's? <laughs> Uh, I, I might, well, no is the answer to that. Uh, I couldn't get into my dad's suit. No, I just think it's great to recycle. Um, you know that that is my thing: recycling, reusing, saving money. You know, helping the planet. And I just think she looks amazing. And you know, the gothic dress was worn in two thousand and two. So um, you know, they they they. She was critic about it critique to saying that it was an un unflattering disaster but actually I think you know if you wear something with confidence um then you look amazing and that's right. that, you know and, and with good hair obviously if you've got good Absolutely. hair good. you know um one of my stories was Boris but oh, I did have backups because I thought that would be 
Oh, that's okay. Um, what's, your, what's your what's your opinion on Boris going then? Do you think it's a stitch up? Do you think it's a good thing? But what is it? I just think it's it's just more and more hype over it. You know, it, it's done. You know what? You know where is he going to go? Like uh, Neil said, he he's going to come out. Trump's isn't he? You know this this. Where is it going to take us? Right. I'm a Boris fan. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You could be a Boris fan or a bit of a Boris fan as well. Uh, I, I, I met him. I really found I really found him fascinating and engaging and, and very funny. And he was a showman at the end. He of definitely needs a good haircut. Well, <laughs> well, actually, actually, they they actually they style his hair to be like that. Believe it or not. <laughs> and so there's a there's a great story about uh, Lewis Hamilton. So I was involved in the racing industry with one of your firms focused in here, actually, Poetons. And uh, Lewis Hamilton, when he was a younger driver, they, his helmet was yellow and everyone else's helmets were white. And when, when his dad was asked why his helmet was a different colour, because everyone else had white helmets, it's because it stands out. And that's the same with Boris. You know, you need sometimes you need something which makes you stand out. And I think that's part of his image. I, I don't think he's actually like that. And when I've met him, he's not he's not the same character you would imagine. He's very, very intelligent. He's very personable. And and I think it's part of the showmanship that that Mark mentioned. Um, well, everyone, everyone, you know, has their opinion, don't they, of a certain person? You should never judge a book by its cover. Well, that's right. I mean, no, most people don't. I'm oh, oh, fortunate enough to meet him. I, I met him three times, uh, and like I said, and it, what I liked about him, he gave he gave me a fifteen minute interview. And not many other people, you know, prime ministers who get to do that, really. Um, anyway, no, thanks ever so much for that. We're going to quickly go into uh, to, to talk uh, about our individual business sectors. Uh, so, Neil, it's great to get you back on. Obviously, you know, we, we won't go into Viserian today. We know what's happened there. We know you've moved on from it as well. You're still a director of the company, aren't you? Yeah, at the moment, yeah, I'm still the director of the company. I'm still trying to help as much as I can. Obviously, you've got a lot of time for the company having set it up. Uh, still the largest shareholder, so got a vested interest in uh, in making sure that it's successful. But time to move on. Lots of things going on in the world. Uh, lots of challenges. So what, and, have been, um, what have you been doing with yourself, mate? Since you since you sort of stood down. Uh, so um, Forest Economic Partnership. Uh, it's a really challenging time for small business in the area. I think uh, interest rates, cost of living, labour rates, all of these things, uh, trying to help the growth hubs with uh, with companies. Spending a lot of time talking to a lot of my friends that are running businesses at the moment, offering them a bit of free advice, uh, offering to, to sit and talk to them. Because I've got to be honest, women are better at talking to each other than men are. Men. You always ask them, how are you? And they'll always say, yeah, I'm great. I'm fine. Uh, and sometimes that tells you everything you need to know because uh, it is it is a tough time at the moment. It's tough for the youth as well. So I'm spending quite a lot of time. We'll talk about Forest Inspiration. That's been a big project of mine recently. Uh, and I'm also doing a lot of learning. So I'm learning about AI. I'm learning about how the future is going to you know, gonna pan out, how it's going to how it's going to look. And uh, at the end of the day, I've got seven kids as well. So, uh, you know, I lead a busy life as it is without uh, without having to work. Well, just going to Inspire in the Forest uh, event, what exactly is it and when is it happening? Uh, 30th of June. Uh, I did pick it out as one of my punchline stories, but um, 30th of June, we're at the uh, Cinderford campus for Gloscoll. Really appreciate their help in pulling this event. We've got something like 800 kids, 750, 800 kids coming and talking about careers because, you know, Kids don't, you, you don't know what you don't know, do you? I mean, when you were at school, you know, did, did did you think you'd be a hairdresser or did you think you'd be a mortgage advisor or did you think you'd run a manufacturing company? You know, we don't know what we don't know. And so it's important that kids get to talk to people. It's important that they get to talk to apprentices, students. Uh, it's, you know, get a really broad kind of uh, uh, experience of, of what's out there. And for the forest of Dean, it's really, really important that we retain those skills within the forest because, you know, a lot of our uh, demographic leave to go and uh, go to university or go and find jobs. You know, they're coming to Gloucester, they're coming to Chelsea, Bristol, uh, down into Wales, and we don't we don't see them again. You know, so we've got an aging population here in the forest of Dean, and so there's some great businesses in the forest of Dean. No one ever knows that the biggest tea bag manufacturer was always in the forest of Dean. If you drove. When I was an apprentice, when if you drove a Ford or a Vauxhall, its camshaft was made in Lydney. 
all the all your black current is made in Colford. You know, people don't understand this. We had, you know, the 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 European headquarters for Rank Xerox was in Mitchell Dean. And they don't know about these great jobs out there. No, that's very that's very true. And it's a fantastic event. I went up there last year. Punchline is supporting it again this year. We'll be there on the day as well. And uh, and I know the fantastic work that you've done behind the scenes there, Neil. Anyway, we're going to have to move on. Thanks ever so much for that for now. Uh, Enzo, let's go back over to you, please, mate. Let's be honest. The, the mortgage rates are crazy at the moment. We, there's a there's a piece in the uh, there's a piece in the hold on a second. I've got it here actually in the nation nationwide is the latest lender to raise mortgage rates again. You must be sick and tired of hearing this. I am. Yeah. Um, started last September when Liz Trust came into uh, power and Quezzy Quirting uh, announced the uh, mini budget. Um, fixed rates, you were able to pick up a five year fixed rate back then at uh, well under 2%. And uh, all of a sudden they jumped up to 6.5%. So business fell off a cliff. Uh, in the last quarter of last year. But this year has been a pretty busy year. Um, uh, you know, last week um, there, we had the concerns over inflation and uh, that the Bank of England may have to put up uh, its interest rates. So the banks are now cautiously reacting to the fact that we may see further increases in the Bank of England base rate. Um, I think it's a short-term thing. Um, the market's very buoyant, very active. And um, I think we're looking at a little blip that um, we can recover from quite quickly. When I've talked to estate agents, the, the market hasn't fallen off a cliff. The, it's still pretty strong out there, isn't it? And I'm assuming... This year, yeah. How, yeah, how does it, it affect in your business? How does it, every time the mortgage rates go up, does the phone go off the, the cliff? You know, Does it just ring crazy? How does it work? Um, so... We uh, we have to react to rates. So we're talking to clients and, and nurturing them into arranging new deals. And then all of a sudden, we might have lined up one with a lender and they decide to pull their interest rates. HSBC are a lender this week that decided to do that. And they said, by close of business today, our rates will be withdrawn. Um, give us a ring to you know book the rate that you're after. And my advisors might be on the phone for three hours in a in a queue waiting to reserve a mortgage deal for a client. So it's um it's a right pain in the backside. I bet it I bet it is. It's continually changes, isn't it? I mean yeah. the, the the mortgage broken industry, I didn't realise there's quite a few of you guys. Now you you you've really built up a great reputation in the county and uh, and going very strongly. What's the sort of secret to your success, do you reckon, Enzo? Well, what I tell my team is hard work and a positive attitude. A bit like this show. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's a it's a difficult place to be in. So so uh, thanks ever so much for joining us. I, I know how busy you are. Let's go over to you, Marina. Um, obviously, fringe benefits. Uh, very sadly, your colleague uh, Holly Guzzard. We we all know about that. We're not going to talk about that that today, as you can imagine. But it must have been. It must have been horrendous for you. Um, well, it just must have been. I, I don't know how you coped with it, to be honest with you. Well, it, it still and always will be really raw. Um, it will be with me every day, and Holly's always in my heart. Yeah. And um, let's talk about the business side of things, because you're there in Southgate Street. You've been there a long time. And it, with the cost of living crisis and things like that, is that affecting the hair salon, the business that you see coming through the door? I think we have our target market. Um, that really does, our social media brings in um, the type of guest that wants to spend money uh, and make them feel and look amazing. So I do feel that there is still a target market out there. Obviously you have a different age group, some can afford it and, and going to mortgages, you'll have some people who have no mortgages um, so they can afford to spend more money uh, on self care. But um, really, I feel it, it is harder to make the money in hairdressing um, since the pandemic, but that has caused a big change in our industry. And obviously people will go a bit longer. They just stretch their visits out um, to, 
you know, you know, mortgage rates, everything, it, it frightens people. You know, the, the media puts a real scare on that situation. But I can have very good ticket bills because people want consistency. They want uh, continuity uh, of feeling and looking good. So if you give that service, and that is one thing that we work on, we actually target, ex have always targeted excellence from the very beginning and specialising in, you know, tailored service. Now, the thing about uh, hairdressing now, I always think it's about the person who's cut my hair. Half the time, it's not really about, it, it's all about that personal getting on with the person and, and chatting to them, isn't it? You've got to be sort of psychiatrists, uh, all, all sorts of things going on, isn't there? In it that can show. be quite um, mentally exhausting at the end of the day. <laughs> as well see, as you see everyone's problems. Oh my gosh, yes. Sometimes I do feel a little bit drained. I'm, I'm very good because I'm very neutral to anyone's um problems but and i don't i don't gossip that's one good thing you shouldn't gossip uh, i can't remember i talked to too many people so i would get it all wrong and tell you the wrong information and look very silly <laughs> <laughs> um let, let's quick talk about the high street itself because footfall in the city itself how are you finding that because you're on southgate street you're in a fortune position there aren't you we're very lucky in southgate street i do feel the footfall is uh pretty high um However, it sometimes isn't, you know, with shops closing, with businesses uh, dying, that doesn't help bringing people in. And the cost of uh, parking charges increasing isn't helping. So people, that is, a, you know, a big topic of conversation with my guests when they arrive. Oh, gosh, the car park's gone up even more. And if someone, someone was in the other day for a massive uh, service, a six-hour service of a colour correction, they have to pay for the day. Right. Okay. I mean, I would have. Yeah, it's just stop people coming into the city, isn't it? But it's we a problem. Need... It's a problem in every town. Absolutely. I think um, I have visited um, towns such as Tetbury, not for a while, but they had a very good pricing um, per hour. They need yeah. to bring the costs down. They need to encourage. You know, be great for the bid to have like a, a business card for people coming into businesses at a discounted rate or. You know, elderly between nine and whatever, 12, the, the, the elderly don't have to pay for parking. Yeah. I mean, I'll just bring in the rest of the, the panel actually very quickly about that. Neil, you must have some views on, on parking. Uh, and what's yeah, so, I, mean, I think there's a natural tension between the councils who are struggling to make their, their, their bank balances balance and, uh, and um, the economic drivers within the town. I mean, I think if you pay for something in the town, then you should get a discount. I mean, the keys do it. I mean, there are, you know, there are plenty of, if you go to Resorts World in Birmingham, where, you know, you go to a concert or you've got a bit of a, a shopping outlet there, if you buy something, they stamp your card or, or trigger your card or you go to the cinema. I, I think to a certain extent, it's a, it's a big turnoff for the town centre. People, they need an excuse to go to the town centre now. It used to be a pastime. It's no longer a pastime. And, um, and and I think it is a real big problem. You know, I would always advocate that we do away with parking charges. I think it's a stealth tax by the councils to try and, you know, it, it's, it's an easy win. But does it turn people off? Absolutely. You know, I think it's and, and we've seen it now. We've seen it in the forest at the, at the car parks. And there's no doubt that it's an economic barrier. And um, is it easy money? Yeah, it probably is. But does it actually work? I don't think it does because you've got the infrastructure to put in there for the parking. You've got, you know, then you then you employ people to go and check the tickets, etc. And I don't think I don't agree with it. I'm sorry. I think I think if um, the truth is they they do need the money. But if you didn't have a parking charge, then anybody who works in the city centre, Enzo's got loads of staff who work in the city centre. They'll all be filling up every single car parking space. And so, what's your what's your view of the parking in the city or of parking in town? How do you find things? Um, I don't, uh, I come to, uh, Gloucester city center for work, but not for any other reason. Um, but you've only got to take a look at the look of the city center, um, to realize that there is, there is an issue. Um, and maybe that is, uh, parking costs. Hmm. Just doesn't drag enough people in ultimately, does it? I mean, I was in Cheltenham yesterday, really buzzing. Um, uh, their parking charges is horrendous, mind you. You know, you try and park on the street there. It's really, really expensive. Um, but I don't stay for very long. That's the thing when I go, I, 
pop in, do my business, and then go out again as quickly as I possibly can. Anyway, guys, we're kind of running out of time. Thanks ever so much. Let's go into um, uh, uh, what your stories are for this week's punchline, please. Neil, what have you picked out? Well, I, I did pick out Forest Inspiration, but we've talked about it already. So the, the next biggest story I saw for the Forest of Dean was the £300,000 uh, grant that they've been awarded, the, the local council, uh, in order to to do some training around net zero, which I think is, a, is, is probably a big problem and uh, are not talked about enough. So the idea is that the planners and the people within the council start taking on board some of these net zero uh, initiatives and, and fully understand them. Because I think there's a there's a lack of information, a lack of uh, a kind of uh, coordination in that area. But that, that was what I picked up, Mark. Okay, no, thanks, brilliant. Uh, Enzo, what have you picked out for this week's Punchline, please? Uh, there's a story titled More Night Closures for Lansany Road. Um, I'm a, a, a Hempstead resident, and uh, the roadworks that have been going on there for forever are, uh, are a pain. I'm just hoping that um, it's all worth the effort when they finish. I, I just took at that road, right, and think they're going to come to the end, and it's all going to get blocked up again. I know. But that, that corner by um, by Sainsbury's was pretty dangerous, though, wasn't it? The amount of accidents that were happening, it just didn't work out where you got squeezed in in at one point but you're going to get squeezed in at the other point i think they're just moving the problem along oh that uh, that is the impression that i get but hopefully um they've done their homework and uh you know moving it 100 meters down the road uh will make a huge difference i, I hope so I, I don't know enough about traffic flow <laughs> but we'll soon see won't we we'll soon see you are right it seems to be going on forever the most happiest person i know is Nick Brody from Avenue Cars who sold that business? Happy days, <laughs> Nick. I've never seen a man so happy. Anyway, Marina, uh, what have you picked out from this week's punch, please? Wow, I printed it off. It's the giant puppets yeah, invite great. people celebrating Gloucester. I think that is really spot on to try and get. I was only talking about the carnival recently, how it years ago it used to have Miss Gloucester on it. You know, it, it's definitely died. But uh, Farah arrives in Gloucester on July the 1st and she'll be welcomed by the city, uh, by Sabrina, the spirit of the River Severn. We just need more footfall to get, invite more people into the town. Really, you know, just try and get bums on seats in, in any business, really, not just in ours. You know, we want... We need more events, don't we? That's 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 the thing. And that's uh, maybe... Uh, a... And also more publicised. It's not publicised enough. It's not. And do you know what? It's one of my bugbears is, unfortunately, they don't want to spend any money. We run the story, we run that story free, but we can't run everything free. It's as simple but who, as... who would know about that? My guests wouldn't know about that coming into the salon. Well, and and I, give them, I give them out punchline. Yeah. Well, I'm loving you even more than I used to. No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, thanks ever so much. Thanks ever so much. My story of, of the day actually is was an event I went to. Funny you mentioned about net zero. It was actually the state as sustainability at the top of business agendas. It was an event I went to on Wednesday, uh, organised by Marsh Commercial, and a fantastic venue at Hawkwood uh, College just outside Stroud. And we had some really great guest speakers who talked about sustainability, who talked about net zero, who talked about those issues, about fossil fuels, bank and stuff, all, all sorts of very, very interesting angles, which I'd never really thought about before. It was a very thought-provoking event. Anyway, that was my story of the week as well. Anyway, thanks ever so much for my, my fantastic panel. I'd just like to thank our, our sponsors, Hayeswood's Business Accountants and Business Advisors. And for you for watching the show, if you like the show, please like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you again next week. Thanks very much. Bye.